Welcome to Hustlers at Home, Bob Harper. I mean, listen, I, so I used to be a lawyer before I entered wellness and I have been following you since like the infancy of <laughs> Biggest Loser. And then obviously like your, your career, it's mushroomed after that. But what, how have you been doing now? Like what is going on in, in Bob Harper's world currently, pandemic world? Well, I'll tell you, um, I, when, once the pandemic started, I, uh, wait, for some reason you just, you just disappeared. Hmm. Where, oh, there you are. Okay, good. Okay. Um, all right. So once the pandemic started, you know, I live in New York also, and it was one of those things where San Francisco just, uh, ordered the shelter in place and, I didn't really understand like what the magnitude was going to be. Uh, and I just thought, okay, this is going to be just like this short term thing and we're going to have it all figured out. And when I realized that it was going to be going on for a while, like fitness is such a huge part of my life as it is with you. And I really started having to do like a makeshift. Uh, I do hot yoga. And so it's like, I was setting up my, oh, I my Girl, I like, I brought in heaters. I was like <laughs> trying to recreate that world, which is really difficult to do. And that's when yes. I went, you know what? I'm getting a Peloton bike. So I got the Peloton bike and I remember uh, talking to uh, a friend of mine, Patina Miller. She's a Broadway Tony Award winning um, uh, actress, singer, dancer. She's everything. And she told me about you. She was like, uh -huh. you got to take Robin's class. Well, I took your class and it was everything that I needed uh, because not only, uh, you, you have to understand also, like I have been a teacher for a very long time. I am very critical. I, uh, I, I listen to what teachers have to say and, uh, you know, and how they deliver and, and, and how much they're going to push because, you know, I like I like everything that you give because it's very inspirational and it's very positive, but it's also very real and it's very, uh, uh, it's very athletic. You know, it's a strong class and, uh, and that's important for me because like I get all the, uh, the positivity and I understand, you know, the importance of that. Uh, I, for me personally, I need it uh, mixed in with, someone that's going to kick my ass. And when I took your class. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, you kicked my ass. And then also the first class I did, like you were going through something also. And I want to say that there could have been a death in your family. Yes. Um, and yes. you talked about that and you got so emotional. And that's when I was like, I'm done. Robin, <laughs> I love her because... You know, I just, I like real, I like people that are just going to just give me what they're feeling. And like, I'm not a good person that is just like, put on a happy face and everything's great. If I'm having a bad day, I'm having a bad day and I'm going to mm -hmm. go through it and I'm going to allow myself to go through it and then move on from it. I, I know that like when I've worked with people for, a, you know, in my career for a very long time, I think that masking doesn't work for a lot of people and it does not work for me. And so that's why, that's why I was just really drawn to uh, you. And Aww. just fit, girl. I mean, you're like squatting. You're not just on a bike. I mean, you're, <laughs> you're doing it all, which I love. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, my, I, I, I used to be a lawyer, then I went into doing ultra marathons and marathons, and then I fell in love with weights, and I know you had a love affair with, with lifting for a while, and oh, yeah. now I kind of, but now I feel, especially at this current time, I feel the freedom to be like, okay, I don't have to move any one way. I can find ways to tap into intensity or ease, and that's actually made me, I think, an even better athlete that I don't have to do one pro program or one modality. Whereas I think I, I'm such a type A that I, once I fall into something, I really go into it, which is good, but also doesn't provide enough balance. So I think that's what I'm trying to find now with, with movement. And you had to, I mean, your own personal fitness journey th these past few years has been 
a transition. You're a heart attack survivor. Three years mm -hmm. ago, yep. you went through a life-changing experience. And I know a lot of folks watching might already know about it, but if you give us an abbreviated, <laughs> to the extent you can, a yeah. life-changing event, give us the abbreviated version. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that because I've been in the health and wellness uh, industry for such a long time, fitness is part of my identity. You know, uh, health and wellness is, is in my DNA. And so the gym has always been my happy place. Like I go there for community. I go there to work out. I go there for a stress reliever. I mean, it, it, it wears so many hats for me. So imagine the thing that you love so much that brings you so much joy and comfort is the exact place where I had this very traumatic event. I was in my gym in Chelsea. I don't remember this day, but basically what happened was I was working out with my um, friends and I woke up in a hospital two days later being told not only did I have a heart attack, but I had gone into cardiac arrest. And if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for the fast action of one of the coaches that, or a couple of the coaches that were there, um, and the fact that there was a doctor in the gym that day who, who was at an event came down. He got, get this, Robin. He, he came down thinking that someone maybe like, you know, hit their head or twisted their ankle. And he was like, I saw Bob Harper laying on the ground and I had already turned blue. Like, you know, like there was the, the AED wasn't working because I was in a, uh, you know, complete cardiac arrest. And it was his persistence. And, if all of your listeners, if they take one thing away from uh, our conversation today, and that is to be CPR certified, mm -hmm. it is so important, not just because of what we do, but like the world that we live in now. I have learned that everyone, everyone is at risk for having a heart attack. And before in my mind, I was like, you know, the overweight person, the smoker, the, the person that doesn't take care of themselves. And, you know, I was none of those. I was very right. fit. I was like, and I was like a muscle queen back then too. Like I was doing, <laughs> I was doing Olympic lifting. I was like 215 pounds doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I don't do any of that um, anymore. Uh, I've completely changed the way I work out, but I still love that kind of intensity. And I get that from Peloton. I get that from the type of yoga that I do. I still do um, uh, different types of um, uh, CrossFit training. So, uh, you know, it's like just trying to find that balance that you just talked about. So you mentioned, first of all, that is absolutely astounding. And your journey I just can't, the only, the only analogy I can think of is when I was diagnosed as a type one diabetic and the endocrinologist was like, and it was like, boom, you know, you seem seemingly peak physical fitness and then boom, you have something, a condition that you are now is, is part of your identity. So did mm -hmm. you have to, how, how did you suss out this new, the new Bob Harper? Or like, I don't know if you can, is it like version 2.0 or is it just, you have different facets now because it is so ingrained in who we are. And then you're almost at a loss of, I, I say that I paint in sweat. Like my artistry uh -huh. is the movement. And I feel like when, when it's hampered at all, whether it's because of injury or something much more serious, we're, we are at a loss for expression. 100%. And I went through a full, I full on identity crisis. I went through a, a very, emotional period that lasted for uh, a while of, you know, who am I? That was the question that I kept asking myself because if I was not the guy in the gym doing those crazy workouts, then, then who, who was I? And uh, it was a, a really difficult challenge for me. It was uh, very humbling. And uh, I had this moment, I remember, because I wasn't allowed during my recovery, I did my cardiac rehab, uh, which Robin, get this, going from the physical capabilities that you have now that I used to have uh, back then, being brought down to walking on a treadmill, you know, completely strapped up with, um, with heart uh, uh, EKGs and all this information, uh, walking like 3.0, on the treadmill, like doing the recumbent bike. Uh, but like, I'll tell you this, 
I'm a really good student because I'm a really good teacher. <laughs> and um, I was like, I will do whatever. Whatever you say. Yes. Tell, yes. Give me the plan. <laughs> girl, girl, whatever you say, you tell me that my heart rate can get to at this time. They wanted me not above. I think 120 was the number. And so I was just like this. Okay. And I would just like play with that. But as I was getting fitter physically, still, I was bringing so much emotional baggage into that because having PTSD, thinking, oh my God, my heart rate's going up. I'm going to have another heart attack. Like I was afraid and I did not like that feeling. And I knew that I was going to have to um, really figure that out. And that's what, um, that's what I did. I really like m meditation, talking to uh, my support group and my friends and just like getting myself back and like, you know, as I'm talking to you now, like I feel better than I've ever felt. You know, I, I have adjusted the way that I work out and, and that's okay. I'm not that, you know, 200 uh, pound uh, muscle guy. Now I'm like, you know, 170 and, uh, and, and loving what I'm doing now. And it's, it's okay. I think that like, and as I think that you, you get, and you understand, you know, life is about, uh, uh, change and evolution and life is about um, not getting stuck and mm -hmm. I, I I found that like once I was like stuck into that like who am I what am I going to do I can't do this anymore once I had got over that pity party you know yes then I moved on and that's why I made my recovery so um, I, I pushed it out there for the world to to see like it was uh, it was hard for me, like, to be able to put those workouts that I was doing, like the 3.0 on the treadmill in the beginning. But I was just like, you know what, if someone can learn from what I went through and be um, helped by it, then we're vehicles, right? You and I, yes. what we have chosen to do in our, in our lives, we are vehicles, not only for ourselves, but for the people that um, look to us for inspiration. And I take that very seriously. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give bullshit to people. I'm going to give them uh, uh, how I feel and what it's about. And I think that that's why people kind of like respond to the stuff that I um, go through because you know, I just, I want to, I want to keep it real. I mean, with, without sounding. Well, like, listen, real does silly. recognize real. I mean, whether you want to talk about energetic frequency or vibes or whatever, like people know, even if it's through a screen, they, they know. And that's why, that's, oh, yeah. that is, that is why we love you. <laughs> what else should folks know? You mentioned the CPR piece. Is there something else that, that the, that, that do you want the average person to know whether they have, you know, indications of, of heart issues or not? Well, I think the biggest thing that I um, would tell people is to really know your health. Know your health from the inside out. Don't judge a book by its cover. I mean, we live in a world where you, know, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't judge um, a person by, uh, just by looking at them. You should judge them um, from inside. And that's what um, I learned about the actual practicalities of health. Knowing, uh, uh, having your doctor, having that relationship with your doctor that you can get the blood work that you need to uh, get done to know what's going on with you. And uh, once you have that kind of information, then there's so much you can do because information is power. And I knew awesome. that I, I, I remember like when I started uh, taking your classes um, and I saw like, I think you wear it on your, do you wear your, uh, yeah. wear it on your arm? And, mm -hmm. <laughs> And I remember seeing that, and there's another person on Instagram. His name is JTM Fit. Oh yes, I, I love him. He's he a, is, he is a beast. Like he a is beast. a beast. Be beast. What? Like I love, and that's why I love you because uh, I like bodies that can do stuff. I don't like <laughs> you know. I don't, if I want to see just a pretty body just standing there, you know, I will go to a museum and look at sculptures. I want to be able to, I, I want you to take this body and I want you to be able to do shit with it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, it's and not just for mirror selfies, honey. We got to be is, able to move things in the world. <laughs> and that's what like JTM fit. He has this, you know, he wears the same device. Yeah. And I remember seeing it on you and I went, I think um, she must have type one diabetes, and uh, mm -hmm. and and then I learned more about you, and I I found that out. So uh, you know, it's like finding out 
what what our limitations are and then becoming limitless. Yes. Oh gosh. Okay. That is like so quotable. Um, yes. Cause that the superhero story, nobody wants to read the superhero story where it's like the queen was born. It was all good. And it's a rat. Like that's so boring. So, w- so when, boring. We're give- when we're given that story arc, when we're given that necessity to pivot, it's like, okay, you can acknowledge the feelings, process them, metabolize them as we would anything else. And uh-huh. then figure out like, what's your next level. And that next level might be a totally different trajectory, but we have to be able to not live in that woe is me place and just say, okay, uh-huh. given the tools I have, what the hell story I'm going to write. And That's that, a- that is what you've done so beautifully. And honestly, and I don't know if folks would have truly understood the humanity. It's just so much, it's just so much more than a headline when you couch it in and I was walking 3.0 on the tread. And if that's where you are today, then let's just, be, let's go do that. You know? And, and I love that message because especially how we're, uh, our world right now in the world uh, which we live, I mean, we're looking to um, make change. We're looking to be um, proactive and we're also looking to, to just feel better. I think that it's been, it's been really difficult and super challenging. And there are times that um, like they look to people like us in our, in our field to, to just feel better. And I think that when you allow um, that person um, an outlet to challenge them, to uh, accept them. And uh, uh, that to me is like, our, our job is, is I think bigger and more important than than ever right now. And I think that I, I went through a lot of, um, you know, a lot of emotions throughout these months. And uh, and there were some people that I would uh, discuss uh, t- or try to discuss this with. And it was just like, you know, well, everything's gonna be better and everything's gonna be fine. I'm like this, my brain doesn't work like that. like. Let's 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 go through let's let's go through all the the shit. Let's like let's talk about it all. And when when you can do that and allow any kind of feelings that you have, I think that's where we really do a good service to uh, the people that look to you. I mean, you think about like you sign into uh, your at home uh, rides <laughs> were just like I looked so forward to to them, and I thought that um, I feel like Peloton was the first to really start doing. Like those at home type workouts, because I don't know if um, anybody else was saying this, because of course, you know, I had my Peloton bike, started doing all the classes, finding out the people that I liked. Um, but in the time, I, I didn't really respond to the older workouts that were a bunch of people in there and everything was just like, great. I needed more current. And then when all, yeah, of, a sudden, yeah, yeah. all of a sudden you all were, you know, Peloton live at home. I was like, yes, ma'am. That's what I want. And, uh, and I really, I thought that was, I thought that was genius. I mean, you're not, that's exactly why we did it. Cause it was like, okay, we have thousands and thousands of classes on demand. That library will still be there, but there's that's something right. very palpable about the lived experience right now that we needed to honor. Um, still positive, you know, still, still dynamic, but not, it couldn't be in a bubble. I, right. I, I, I couldn't do it in a bubble, you know? Right. So No, uh, I have a question for you. Yes. Okay, so um, this is gonna be a hard question, I would think, or maybe not. Uh, so whose classes do you like to take? Oh, uh, gosh. Uh, okay, so when I want to just like laugh my butt off and feel like I'm like, kikiing with a friend I take Cody's Cody. classes yep. and when I or just just um King's classes and when I want to just get my ass kicked it's usually Alex's like intervals like there's something about Alex's his like boom and his voice like I will run through a wall for that man like I'm just like let's go <laughs> so that's like my current that's like my current go-to and Honestly, like any artic, artic, artist music theme with any instructor, like those are always iconic partnerships. I will take all of those classes. And I've taken, yeah. I'm making my way through all of the pride classes. I just took Emma's listening party class this week. So I highly recommend. 
Yeah, okay, I'll do it. Yeah, I, um, I love Alex's class because, you know, I just like that he is just like, well, I love his music and I just love that he is just driving us to just- Like pours it on the bike, like, yes, yes, yes. He's yeah. so talented. I mean, all the instructors have, it's, it's kind of, that's just so beautiful is that you can pick, you're like, what frequency do I want today? And you can kind of just turn the dial, you know, in what yeah. way that you want to yeah. vibe out. <laughs> I know, I, I know exactly. Right when you started describing Cody's class, I, I felt the same way. It's like, when I just want to just laugh, he, that bitch makes me laugh so hard sometimes. So hard. Like, I have cried from laughter on a bike with him. He is, uh -huh. I mean, that's like, I, he's like family. Yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. why I'm biased. But yes, I agree. I'll tell you, uh, because there, there are times, again, being, uh, being a coach for as long as I've been a coach, uh, I found uh, this British guy, Ben Aldis. Mm -hmm. and, and I like that he um, is just, he's very straightforward. Like he's an athlete, he goes in, it's very no nonsense. And same with Dennis. Dennis gives me a little bit more personality than Ben does. Um, but you know, I like, I mean, again, I, I, I lean toward, um, the people that are just like straight, just straightforward, just giving it to you. But I was interested. I was this like, is the I work. Who, I wonder who Robin, do you ever do your own classes? Sometimes, especially the more, the big ones, like the big, like, like I'll always take the music rides. Like, of course I took the JLo ride with Jeff King and um, I have a Dolly Parton ride coming up. I'll probably take that 3000 times because I'm obsessed with Dolly Parton, you know? So we do, we do. And of course it's just like anything else. Like if you, you need to watch tape to learn what works and how to collaborate with our production team better and what, you know what I mean? Like it, we have mm -hmm. to be critical um, of what we produce. It's like, you can't own a restaurant and not eat the food, so. <laughs> right, and, um, and doing Hustlers at Home for you, what inspired you to do this? What, what were you it, looking for? It started because I wanted to widen the aperture of the conversation. This is before, I started this before we were filming Live at Home. And I was like, well, I really want to engage with the folks in my community, people I trust and value their opinions, mm -hmm. you know, some Peloton instructors and then people in the industry or not, just folks that I'm just like, I'm scrolling on Instagram and I want to dive a little deeper, you know? So this is an opportunity to just take a few minutes and just ask questions that maybe uh, an Instagram caption doesn't do, do justice. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I like it. What, can you tell me a little bit about the organization that you're involved in, Survivors Have Heart? Yeah, uh, it, this is probably uh, the, the thing that I have, have been so proud of in my career. And I've, I've been very fortunate to do a lot of things. I mean, I got to work with Michelle Obama. And I mean- I know, wait, I have to ask you, I actually had it in my mental note. I, I'm obsessed with her, obsessed with her. Was she, is she everything that- I'm gonna I tell to you. Okay, let's, let, let me just tell you a okay, little bit about- Okay, that's a two-part question. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you about um, Michelle Obama. I remember, like, I worked on her Let's Move initiative, and it was the first time meeting her. Like, I went to this, this big, like, arena that had, like, a, thousands and thousands of kids, and, like, I'm on stage with her um, for the very first time, and, like, we're dancing around and having a really good time, and then I got to meet her uh, and work with her, you know, throughout the- uh, Throughout that eight years, there was a, a, just a few year, a, a few years that the Let's Move initiative. But this is the point. So now it had been a couple of years later, and she was having, uh, she was changing the nutrition facts on the um, on all of our foods, which was a really big deal. And um, I was invited to go to the to DC to to launch this. I think it was DC. Anyway, the point is, I had not seen this woman in. Uh, in a couple of years and I was in line to meet her again and um, she saw me and was just like, Bob Harper, like, oh, You're like, you know my name? <laughs> I was like, excuse me? I mean, she just like hugged me and it was like, it was just like the best thing in the world. Like the, 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 the uh, just the personality and the personable approach. That was so great. And like, when I finally got to meet her husband, you know, all of a sudden this man is talking to me. He's like, I hear your wife tells me that you're the hardest trainer that um, she's ever worked with. And I was like, 
well, that's a lot coming from her. I mean, she's so fit. Anyway, um, I absolutely love her. So now okay, that yeah, talk about the career highlight. Okay, so that's setting the stage because if you've had iconic moments like that, that's to say right. that this is the most rewarding, okay, yeah. tell us, tell this, us why. This is, uh, Survivors Have Heart is um, the most rewarding thing I've done with my career. I started out, uh, I've been working with this major pharmaceutical company, uh, AstraZeneca, for uh, like three years now. And it was the, in the first year, um, we, it was going to be just straightforward. It, it was going to be, you know, what I'd gone through with my heart attack and in my recovery. But sitting down with these fabulous people that I've worked with in this company, we put together something called Survivors Have Heart. And what that is, is... We go, we've been going around the country talking to fellow heart attack survivors and their caretakers and what, um, what, we've, what they've all experienced. And, you know, as you know, when you um, have a conversation with someone, there's power in words and there's power in, in bringing that, that energy together. And Robin, the very first one we ever did, it was just, it was just so simple, but beautiful and we realized that we had something and mm. it turned into this this job of going out on the road talking to fellow heart attack survivors and the help that not only did were we able to give them but also to the the medical professionals that would come listening to listen to our speeches uh, and and my talks what was great about it it's super personal we decided it we didn't we didn't want to open it up to just the public um, and what we've been creating has been magical. And uh, I've just been so fortunate. Like I was supposed to be shooting a new commercial with them. We were supposed to do it right before, um, right before COVID happened. So we've been obviously having to put this on uh, the back burner, but uh, you know, it's just, it's been so rewarding because it's just, it's been helping so many people. I remember in my recovery, I was uh, talking with Dr. Oz of all people. And he said to me, he was like, you know, your job, your career has like really shown you in, uh, in a way that you've been, you've been this fitness professional, this health fitness um, expert. And he was like, what has happened to you now, you, you're going to have so many more eyes on you. And um, with that, it's going to be a greater responsibility. And you have to decide what you're going to do with that. And that's why being upfront, open, pushing out um, my agenda, but also knowing that what I'm trying to do is just help some people. And I've been um, allowed to do that. And it's been, it's been the most rewarding thing I've ever done. When you find that magic, I mean, in, in all the ways, when you find that magic, you, you don't look away. You, you, go, you go deeper. So yeah. what are you most excited about? Professionally, pro like it could be your dog. What, what's something, what's some specific thing that you're very excited about right now? Gosh, I think um, that'll be the last. Thing, <laughs> uh, I think. Uh, well, you talk about my dogs. I have two: Carl and Vivian. Carl Lagerfeld, Vivian Westwood. Um, they're my, they're my babies. I mean, I love them. They're they're at my feet right now. Um, so I'm always re really excited about them. I'm excited to see what's going to happen in this world that we're in right now because I think that we're and, and this is me being just the most optimistic of just like, you know, is change really um, happening? Is change around the corner? And um, I'm going to just, I'm gonna pray on it and, and, and hope, that, hope that we get to see that. And I, uh, I'm excited about the, 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 the change that hopefully will happen. And, um, and then I'm also, when, it, when, uh, when I think about fitness, I'm excited about, um, what's coming next. And I think that uh, living in quarantine and, and having these conversations and having these workouts um, with people, I, I, you know, like the way the Peloton does it, but like also like I have this small group of people that I do these uh, workouts with and it's like, uh, it's so much fun and it's interesting. And like, uh, I think that the fitness industry is going to change because what has happened here and how people have been working out because we've all, we've all had to kind of figure it out. And I think that when you put creative people in um, an uncomfortable situation, yes, 
art that's going to happen. I mean, I think about the, yes. art, the, the art that's going to come out of here, the, the music, the, the literature, the, 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 the paintings, the sculptures, everything. It's like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see that. Mm -hmm. the, we can, the, sometimes the pressure can be good for us if we use it as a catalyst or we use it as fuel. I too am excited to see what's happen what happens. And I, I'm really hopeful. I, I believe that we can band together as dreamers who mm -hmm. do. And I, I've chilled. I, I don't know other way to, to channel. I mean, it's like, we have to, it's like, like, I don't know how to live in this world without, like none of this has meaning unless what we're doing allows people to feel stronger and having uncomfortable conversations and empowering disenfranchised folks. Like I, mm -hmm. I've never felt stronger about that. So um, it's amazing to me that what we do in terms of having conversations about wellness, I can have such, it's not just how can you feel good in your body? It's like, how can you feel good in your body in order to become a better sister, brother, global citizen, partner? I mean, it, it, it's taken on a different meaning. Um, I mean, you know, a meaning that existed for, for centuries, especially for the, the justice folks doing this work. But I mm -hmm. think our work does, it, it can be apolitical, but it can empower folks to be better global citizens. And I think that what you're doing, I, I think with Hustlers at Home, I think that um, what you're doing when you get in front of that camera and you expose yourself the way that you do, you are such a, you're a role model. You are someone that I want to listen to. And I think that it's, you have a great responsibility and I see it and I see that you take it very seriously. And that's what I pick on, pick up on uh, as one of your peers, one of your, um, you know, fellow fitness enthusiasts. <laughs> oh, listen, thank you for your time, Bob Harper. I can't even tell you how long I have been following your career. I mean, truly, when I was a lawyer, you were one of the folks I wrote down as like, who is doing really badass things in fitness? <laughs> so to say, to say that your representation precedes you and continues to expand is an understatement. So I really well, appreciate your time today. I really appreciate that. And I just have to say that I, when I first saw you, it was love at first sight. And this conversation has just uh, brought it even stronger. You are a gift to the people that um, get to be surrounded by you and uh, the people that get so much from you in your classes. You are a gift to people. So thank you. Thank you. I'm about to start crying. Thank you. I appreciate you sending you so much love. I can't wait until we can like actually hug and meet in person, but this will have to do for now. <laughs> Thank okay. you, Bob Harper. Where can folks find you just in, just in case they're not following you yet? Uh, they can find me on my Instagram, which is Bob Harper and um, my Twitter, which I is my trainer, Bob. God, I hope that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all have access to Google, honey. Y'all can Google okay. for his Twitter. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Bob. Bye. Bye, honey. Thank you.